Hey, it's Chris. Um, and this is not uh, an official tips from the top floor episode. Um, there's no photography in this one, in episode 888. Um, so if that's what you came for, I'm sorry, but um, I will have more photography content in the next one again. So yeah, feel free to skip this if uh, you're not interested in anything else. Um, I wanted to make this its own episode because I believe it deserves attention. Um, I've already hinted at this in a previous episode, but I decided to open up and uh, give you a bit more background on what's going on. So it, here's what's going on in podcast advertising right now. Um, and I'd like to talk about this, uh, how this will have an impact on on this very show, on myself, and in the end, even on you. And uh, I've already told you that one important source of my income is going to go away starting January. And I'm, I'm just seeing more and more podcasters who are in the exact same boat. And uh, some of them are beginning to get vocal about it. So I decided, yeah, why not speak out? Because it is really uh, quite a, dramas a, a, a dramatic, a drastic, dramatic change here. So here's how this income model used to work. I was signed with, or I still am signed with, one of the big podcast ad agencies. Uh, they're called Midroll. And they would sell advertising for my show. And they sell advertising for a lot of podcasts. And uh, I would give them my listener numbers. And uh, they would go to their advertisers and or to advertisers that approached them. And then sell campaign campaigns for me. And, uh, and then Midroll kept a cut of that. And in a nutshell, that's the value they bring me, ad sales. And uh, those ads from Midroll, those were a big part of the ads that you heard here on the show and that you will hear until the end of the year because that's how long I will be working with them. So in this model, advertisers would track performance of those ads by, uh, by two, two basic things pretty much, by counting how often their discount code would be used. So... If you go to advertise XYZ and use code TOPFLOOR to get 20% off, they obviously would count that. And then they would also count how many people uh, came to the landing page. So if you uh, if you go to advertiser.com slash TOPFLOOR, they would, of course, count that too. And then they would decide if the campaign was worth it, if uh, I brought enough sales or awareness if it was an awareness campaign and then they would come back for more or move on or yeah whatever it's their choice and this is a very straightforward model and it's a very fair model in my book i give something they give something and you as the listener uh, you can pretty much decide do you want to listen to this ad do you want to skip it um I'm even making it really easy to skip the ads by uh, deliberately putting music under the ads there's a background music um, which is nowhere else in the show. So you'll notice right away if you, oh, an ad is coming up and if you skip too far, you you will know. That's that's the main reason there is music in the background when you hear an ad. Um, also, it's absolutely clear what's an ad and what isn't, right? I'm not, I'm not doing any any product placements, any shady stuff, no, no air quotes, integrations. A paid ad is clearly a paid ad. And again, I think this is a very, very fair way of doing this. Uh, so, when um, when Midroll apparently asked a whole bunch of the shows they are selling ads for to switch over to a new hoster by the name of Omni. Yeah, that, that's what they did. They asked uh, me and several others. Um, I, I assume everyone who they sell ads for to switch over hosting to a different company, to Omni. Uh, that did ring several alarm bells for me. Now, hosting here, just, just to explain, hosting here means the audio files, the, the MP3s that you're listening to an MP3 right now, and your podcast client streams it or downloads it. Um, and it doesn't matter if you listen through Apple Podcasts or Castro or Overcast or Downcast or Spotify or whatever. The audio typically comes from my own hosting. I have control over that. I, won't, I, won't, I don't inject any weird stuff into the audio. 
I do use um, I do use an independent service for tracking. They're called FeedPress, and uh, they give me basic statistics over download numbers while while they filter out the robots and stuff that doesn't count. And what I get from them are two things. The first is a rough estimate on how many people are subscribed to the show. And second, uh, and that's the information that advertisers want, how often an episode was downloaded. And from sometimes from what part of the world, um, if it's an international advertiser, they kind of want to know if this is predominantly in the States or if it's worldwide and how well. But in general, that's that's all the information I have. I have download numbers by country, maybe. It doesn't go any deeper, more granular than that. And then, again, that download number is what I report back to Midroll. And then they base their ad sales uh, on that number and the advertisers are happy. And this is how it used to work. And this is the model that I think is really fair. And as I said, Midroll asking me to move all my podcast media hosting to another host of their choice, that rang a few alarm bells because um, that would take away a lot of control from me, which is something that... As an independent podcaster, I need that. I need to protect not just the show, but to protect you, the audience. And I'll get to why that is in a minute, but um, that's kind of the crux of the whole thing. So, again, I found another podcaster uh, being vocal on YouTube. Uh, his name is David Pakman, And, um, yeah, he's been very vocal about the exact same thing happening to him. So... Uh, let me play a bit of uh, audio from his announcement. I have a story for you today that's a really unfortunate story, and it's been a difficult thing for us, but I hope that if nothing else, it'll be an interesting kind of peek behind the curtain of some of the things going on with podcasting and your data and you being tracked when you listen to shows. So yeah, right here, <laughs> you have to get a first clue of what this will all be about. One of the biggest relationships that we have for getting these ads on the show is with an ad agency called Midroll. We started working with Midroll years ago, and over time, Midroll has been acquired a couple of times by other companies. They're now part of the same company that owns the podcasting app Stitcher. And we've done a lot of advertising deals with them. Thankfully, they've brought us a significant amount of revenue. A lot of those ads that you see at the end of a YouTube video or that you hear on the podcast were brought to us by Midroll. This is a great thing. It's been a great relationship. Yeah, and I have to uh, second every word he said. It's been a great relationship. Midroll was always considerate. They were always asking, before they brought in a new advertiser on the show, um, they were always asking if it was a good fit for my audience, if, it would, uh, if I would like to endorse them. So they made me, me the one to decide if I wanted a specific advertiser or not. I was the one saying yes or no. I was the filter pretty much. And um, and I've, it, over, over the years, I've refused quite a few sponsorships because uh, they wouldn't have been a good fit for you, the audience, or because I didn't trust in the product. Um, so even though they were uh, dangling uh, the carrot in front of me, the green carrot in front of me, um, I uh, every now and then I said, no, this is not a fit. I cannot uh, take on this advertiser. So, okay, let, let, uh, let's hear some more from David. But a couple of months ago, we were contacted by Midroll, and they said, listen, uh, we want to transition you um, over to hosting your podcast with a company called Omni, O-M-N-Y. Now, before I even looked into this company, I thought it's a little weird for an ad agency to come in and say, hey, you need to change your podcast host if you want to continue working with us. And that's exactly what happened here to me. Um, they came in and said, you will, we'll, we'll have to transition you over to a new podcast host. And, uh, why is that problematic? I mean, shouldn't it make no difference to you, the audience where your, the files are hosted, as long as you keep getting your weekly podcast download or stream, um, that shouldn't matter. Right. Well, okay, there, <laughs> of course, it should matter uh, for reasons that become obvious in a minute. There are two sides. Well, actually, there are three sides. There's the ad agency, there's the podcaster, myself, and then there's you, the audience. And this move has 
implications for um, the two of us, you and me. Um, so let's hear it from David again regarding the side of the podcaster. Before I go any further, this is already a very strong arm action to come in and say, unless you become the customer of this particular company, we're going to take away a whole bunch of money, particularly when it's money that's now part of our budget. We use the ad revenue to pay salaries and to buy equipment and for connectivity and all of the, you know, rent, studio rent, all of that stuff. We abide by all of the guidelines that mid roll puts in place. We do all the right stuff. And now they're coming in and saying, Hey, listen, you've got to go and become the customer of someone else. If you want to keep getting any revenue for, for from us, but that's only part one. It actually gets much worse. Yes, yes. So that that's all nice and good. And, and you'll still be wondering how that affects you. And, uh, here's how it would affect you. So I started looking into the sales pitch that we were being given about Omni. And I saw that one of the big selling points was that Omni would create or provide much better analytics about you, about our audience, which could then be used to sell ads and to target ads in a better way. No, let me come in here for a second. Targeted ads are those ads that keep following you around wherever you go online. Um, sometimes even offline. If you ever searched online for something specific and you were wondering why you were all of a sudden seeing ads for the same products you just searched for on a totally different website, um, that is part of targeted advertising. Now, this raised a red flag for me. And as I researched it more, I learned that the way Omni does this is via what's called a tracking pixel. Now, without getting into the technology, tracking pixels are used in a lot of different advertising contexts. It allows for your behavior to be tracked across the internet, often across devices, and to be used as part of the sales pitch to potential sponsors by mid roll. Now, I asked, is that opt in for our audience? Is our audience consenting to be tracked in that way? And I was told, no, it is not. You, if I made the switch, would not have any say in being tracked in this way by Omni. Now, this is not illegal in the United States. It's questionable. But interestingly, as far as I can tell, this is illegal in Europe on the basis of the new GDPR guidelines that now exist. So listen, financially, I'm making the wrong decision here, but I am not going to bow to this bullying pressure, nor am I going to subject you to being tracked, which while not illegal, I find immoral to just switch. There's no opt in and you're just being tracked in a different way by my podcast. I get it. We know that this is happening on Facebook. We know it's happening elsewhere, but I don't want that happening with my podcast. And yeah, there it is in a, in a nutshell. And uh, I wholeheartedly agree with David on this. Uh, tracking my audience without my consent and without their consent is not okay. It's a privacy issue. And while in the end it means a substantial loss of income for me, um, imposing this kind of tracking on you without an opt-in and without the possibility to opt out, I just can't do that. I won't do that. I'd rather I'd rather stop podcasting than throwing my audience under the under the bus here. There's an over a decade long relationship with many of you. Uh, this podcast has been going on for 14 years now, and it's been mainly characterized by trust. I think you listen because essentially you trust that I'm not lying to you, that I'm not giving you any BS. You listen because you implicitly know that I'm not selling you something that I can't stand behind. Um, you are part of this community because you know that I mean it when I tell you that I won't throw you under the bus. So I'm out. I'm not moving my hosting over to Omni. I'm not selling out. <laughs> Let some, someone else track your listening habits. I'm not making you the product. So the good news for you uh, is that starting in January, you'll hear a lot fewer ads on this podcast. And uh, the good news is that I'll keep full control on the hosting and on the fairly minimal level download statistics that, uh, that I do. Um, you're not being sold to someone who's tracking you without your consent. And... Uh, while this decision to not switch over hosting and instead uh, and stop 
instead stop the relationship with Midro, uh, while that decision is going to be uh, financially difficult for me, uh, deep down, I know that it's the right thing to do uh, to protect you, to protect you, the audience, and to protect your privacy. And uh, as I said, I'm I'm also still looking for a more kind of steady sponsorship partner, similar to the model that I have here on the Happy Shooting podcast here in Germany with two sponsors, um, where there's no tracking, there's trust between me, the podcaster, and, uh, and the advertisers, and uh, they can track the performance using codes and uh, using a landing page, and they are happy with what they're getting, and I'm happy, and the audience is happy because they get something valuable out of it. So uh, I'm still looking for that. Honestly, at this point, it's not looking good. Um, it, I'm... I'm, I'm again putting this out here. Um, looking for someone to, um, someone in the in the photographic uh, environment. Um, yeah, maybe it's possible. Now, at this point, I haven't found anyone. So, if you want to help, um, the best thing you can do is to go over to Patreon and support the show. And and while I love one-time donations, they're wonderful. The, the regular support that Patreon provides is, is just so much better in terms of planning and decision making. Uh, and it starts at $1 per episode. So you, you're not paying if I don't release a regular episode. You're, you're not paying anything. If I release a normal episode, you will pay for this. This episode, this one you're listening to right now, is not going on Patreon because I won't, <laughs> I won't make you pay for that. But um, it, it, Patreon creates a regular income. Even though at this point, it's actually not a lot because I didn't have to push it because uh, I was making uh, I was m- making income through midroll. I think at this point through Patreon, we're at like 60, 60 something dollars per episode. So <laughs> there's still a lot of room for improvement. But uh, you can really make a difference with your regular support. And uh, I mean, if, if I do four shows in, in a month, that's like one cup of coffee in a month. But even if, if, even if you're unable to chip in financially, um, there are more ways to help. And uh, I've set up a page at tfttf.com slash support that lines out other ways to help. Again, that's tfttf.com slash support. And yeah, that's it. I'd just like to thank you for, for your support. And uh, maybe this uh, background helps you understand better what's going on right now and um and what pot the podcast world which is mainly ad finance which is mainly financed through sponsorships um what the world and podcasting is going through right now thank you <laughs>